We're animating a glittering New Year's firework effect this week with bursting, sparkling rays. The color palette for this project is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description and you can download and install it. I'm going to start by creating a brand new canvas. I've listed my specs on screen and let's begin. This week's tutorial is brought to you by Envato Elements, which is kind of like the Netflix of graphic design. They have tens of thousands of resources available to artists, including stock photos, presentation templates, audio tracks, logos, fonts, and my favorite, Procreate brushes. We're actually going to be using a set from their library for this week's tutorial, and they've generously offered every Tuesday subscribers with a 70% off coupon, which makes it less than $10 a month to try out. It's limited time though, so tap on the link in the video description to grab your coupon, and let's go download our brushes. Let's pick up those brushes. So once you're logged into Envato Elements up at the top, just type in glitter and then tap on add-ons. And if we filter over here, we can choose Procreate and it's going to be this one right here, this golden glitter. So I'm gonna hit download, install it into Procreate and then I'll meet you there. Okay, I'm in Procreate with my brand new canvas and the first thing we're going to do is get our canvas set up for our animation. So let's apply a background color first. I'm going to come into my layers, tap on background color and it's the middle color out of these three. Next, we're going to add in our message. I'm going to use hand lettering for this, but you can definitely use typable text if you'd rather do that. So I'm going to use this first color in our color palette, come into the brushes, and for the lettering, I'm going to use the golden diamond brush, but the golden diamond brush doesn't have a high streamline and that can make it a lot easier when you're lettering. So I'm going to tap on that brush, head into the stabilization category, and just increase the streamline. I'm gonna come up to about 70% and hit done. I'm going to write Happy New Year, and since I have three words, I'm going to put them each on their own layer. That way I can kind of center them up without affecting everything at once. And I like giving myself a center guideline. That way I can stay centered with everything. So I'm just going to hit the wrench, canvas, drawing guide, edit drawing guide. And up here on the color bar, I'm going to choose a light color and then increase the thickness and the opacity so I can see it better. And then for the grid size, just up it all the way to max. And now I've got a center point for my canvas and especially working on a dark colored canvas. It can be tricky sometimes to see the canvas bounds. That also helps me with that. All right, so I'm just going to write those three words on separate layers. Okay, I'm going to select all three of these and just kind of center it where I want it on the canvas and then I can flatten these. So I'm just going to pinch them all together and now they're all on the same layer. I can turn off my drawing guide now. And now we're going to draw what our firework is going to look like when all the rays are shooting out in their entirety. And we can use that as a guide as we're animating those rays. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to change my color to this yellow, the last one out of the three. And then I'm going to switch to the golden dot brush and I'm also going to increase the streamline on this one. So come to stabilization and I'm just going to increase the one, this one up to about 80% and then hit done. My brush size is gonna be about 10% for this. This brush has really good pressure dynamics, so I can go from little pressure to lots of pressure, and that gives me a really nice bursting effect too. So I'm gonna keep that in mind, and I'm just gonna come all the way around my lettering and put these rays in. So they're going to be different lengths, and I'm increasing my pressure as I get to the end of the ray. So I'll go light pressure, heavy pressure. Now I have an idea of what my rays are going to look like when they're fully drawn in. So now what I'm going to do is use the rays as a template. So I need to reduce the opacity of it. So come to that layer and I'm going to bring it way down to like 35% so I can just see it. And I need my lettering to stay ever present in my animation. It is always going to appear here. So we have to keep these things in mind as we prepare for our animation. So now let's activate our animation assist palette by coming to the wrench canvas and toggle on animation assist. Down here you'll see two frames. The last frame is going to be our rays. So if I turn my rays on and off, you can see that little frame goes away. So I'm going to tap on that frame and set it as my foreground. That way, whenever I'm drawing in a new frame, I will have that as my template to work from. And then my lettering also needs to be there all the time. So I'm going to tap on that frame and choose it as my background. Next, I'm going to create a brand new layer right in between them. 
and this will be the first frame of my animation. So my first frame, I actually don't want anything there. I want to have a pause without anything but the lettering before the animation begins. So I'm actually going to create a second frame now, and this is where I'm going to start this bursting effect. So what I want to happen is I just want a little bit to show and then it slowly be drawn out. So that is my plan. I'm going to come into my settings now and I'm going to change my frames per second down to 10. When I was playing around with this idea, I played with a bunch of different frame rates and that was always my favorite. I'm going to do a ping pong effect. So it's going to draw all the way out and then it's going to come back in and then draw all the way out again. Instead of drawing all the way out, stopping and then starting all over again. Onion skin frames, I'm going to bring this down to one, and then onion skin opacity is going to be about 50%. We'll see how that looks and we can change it if we need to. All right, we've got everything ready to go. I'm on my second empty layer and we're going to start drawing things in. So we're going to start off very small because we need to add a lot of frames so we can lengthen our animation. So I'm going to do is put a little dot at the end of each one of these. making sure I got all of them. And now if we turn off our template, you can see all the little dots on there. And now we're just going to keep making it a little bit longer with every frame. So I'm keeping that template on. This is the frame that I just drew those dots on. So now I'm going to create a brand new frame and we need to extend it a little bit further. So when we applied this onion skin opacity of 50%, it shows us where the previous frame the artwork on the previous frame, it shows us where it is at 50% opacity. So it's a little tricky to see. So let me increase the opacity a little bit so we can see it a little bit better against our template. So I'm going to come up to 65%. I think that'll be, that's a little easier for me to see the dots because I need to make the same mark only a little bit longer now. So I need to know where it ends so I can make it a little bit longer. Now we're going to do the same thing and just remember that we're increasing in pressure as we get further out. So we're gonna have very little pressure as we're drawing these little marks in. So I'm just going a little bit more because we started with a dot. So this just needs to get a little bit longer. On to the next frame. So you can, you can always add a layer to add a new frame or down here, you can just hit add frame and continue working around. So I'm gonna do like three more of these where I'm just making them a little bit longer each time and then we'll preview it it's just to get an idea of how things are looking and then we'll finish everything off. So I'm gonna speed up the video and just create those three next frames. And I like previewing this without the template layer turned on. That way we can see everything really clearly. So this very top layer that we had before, turn that off. And then down here, just hit play. And we can kind of see what's happening and if we need to change anything, if anything's moving at a different rate than we like. We can also preview if we increase the speed. So the frames per second, if you increase that, it's going to get a lot faster, but then you have to add a lot more frames to get a long enough animation for it to continuously loop on Instagram if that's where you plan to post it. So I'm going to reduce and see. So this is 10 and let's also look at 8. I also think 8 could work pretty well. It's really tempting to draw these rays out quicker than you probably should. The fewer amount of increments that you move, the better. All right, I'm going to increase this back up to 10. I'll hit pause. And you just want to make sure you pick up at the last frame that you drew. And we'll turn our template back on. And we can add a frame. And I'm just going to keep finishing this out. So little increments at a time until the rays are fully drawn. And then I'll show you what to do next. I've got 
all of my rays drawn in fully now. I can turn off my top template. Let's preview what this looks like. I think it could actually be a little bit slower. Let's bring this down to eight. So next I want to have it pause at the end and just show off its full glory of all of the rays being fully drawn in. So normally I would come to the last frame and I would tap on it and say hold duration and I would just hold it longer. But because this is glittering, it actually looks really cool if you just draw a few more like these from scratch. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna draw like three or four more that it just have it fully drawn out because these little sparkles at the end are going to be in different places each time even though it's following the same line and it's gonna look like it's glittering as it's fully drawn out. So. I just really love ending on that kind of high note before it retracts back down. So that's what I'm going to do. And because we've got our onion skin opacity that's reduced, we don't even need to turn on our template layer anymore. Just by creating a new frame or a new layer, I can see what's drawn underneath it. So I'm just going to use that as my guide and draw these in like three more frames at least of these fully drawn out. And that will also lengthen our animation. So that's always a good thing too. Got my three extra frames drawn in that have the rays fully drawn out. So let's see what that sparkling effect looks like. I'm going to hit play. I think it does need to go a little bit faster. Let's check out what nine frames per second looks like. Maybe a middle ground would be good. Yeah, I think that's good. I could also go up to 10. I think I'm sticking with 10. <laughs> Keep going back and forth. But there's our animation. And from here you go to your wrench, hit share, and you can share or export it as an animated GIF or an animated MP4, depending on your use. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you next year.